D.C. bribery scheme. The U.S. Department of Justice headed by Jeff Sessions has successfully ended a government contractor's life. He had perpetrated an estimated 15-year bribery and corruption racket. The degenerate was sentenced to five years in prison. He was even ordered to pay $15,000 legal fee, fine. Advertisement, U.S. District Judge Arinda L. Wright Allen today sentenced Joseph P. Allen, 56, of Panama City, Florida, following his guilty plea on April 19, to one count of conspiracy to commit bribery, the Justice Department statement read. Jeff Sessions and the Dodge elaborated on the scheme that was worth almost $3 million that occurred between 1999 and 2014. According to the statement of facts included in Allen's guilty plea, Allen conspired with a government contracting official, Scott B. Miserandino Sr., 58, formerly of Stafford, Virginia, to use Miserandino's position at Military Sea Lift Command to enrich themselves through bribery, the statement continued. Advertisement, Miserandino, Allen's alleged helper, hasn't even been sentenced yet in the military contracting fraud. However, the details give a little more information on the fraudulent plans. Specifically, beginning in about 1999, Miserandino used his position and influence at Military Sea Lift Command to facilitate and expand Allen's company's commission agreement with a third party telecommunications company that sold maritime satellite services to MSC. Unknown to MSC or the telecommunications company, throughout the scheme, Allen paid half of the commissions he received from that telecommunications company to Miserandino as bribes. Miserandino was charged with five counts on May 4. It's actually almost as disgusting as the VA scandal that ran under the Obama administration. This isn't something that should be taken lightly and if this is what Sessions does, he will maintain his job for a very long time. What do you think of Sessions and the Dodge going after these scumbags? Share this story so everyone knows that the Attorney General is redeeming himself. Rex Tillerson completely demolished John McCain. I can openly say that John McCain is no one's favorite, and Americans are now confident that this man never accomplished anything beneficial to the country. McCain was a part of so many controversies, and we don't really know the reason why he is continues to be active in the political world. He does not spare any words when it comes to bashing the president, and it looks like the worst is yet to arrive. Nevertheless, Rex Tillerson made a decision to take things into his own hands. The entire thing began when McCain attempted to persuade Americans into believing that Tillerson does harm on people, requesting him to stop. He even cited the mystical oppression policies, and it was time that Tillerson does something about it. We think that McCain never saw coming that Tillerson would do or say something like this. You don't know what you're talking about, John, stated Tillerson and you have to acknowledge, McCain earned those words. Do you recall what he claimed about Tillerson? Tillerson has sent a message to oppressed people everywhere, don't look to the United States for hope, said one of McCain's pieces. Based on him, America ought to help people all over the world, and let its people live miserably. McCain only has sympathy for those outside our country. Well, perhaps he is just trying to attract someone's attention. The president chose Rex Tillerson for a reason, and we highly support his suggestions of the new team. McCain also has motives for writing all the rubbish about the president and his policy. However, Americans don't agree with his judgment. It's no surprise that McCain attempts to move forward with his agenda. We all realize that he is in fact a liberal that lives among Republicans. If you too disagree with John McCain share this story. Thray Galdi makes amazing announcement, can't stop cheering him on. If there's one politician from the Capitol that many other rising stars on the political scene can look up to, that is South Carolina Representative Thray Galdi. The congressman has endured many hard punches the left had delivered at him simply because of one reason, Gowdy stands only for the truth. Thray has been the voice of truth throughout the years in every field he has served this country. Thray Galdi recently delivered a poignant and moving speech at the House floor regarding a personal situation. And, for the record, 
This is not his first time to move the crowd, and a tough crowd it is. The House Republicans have once even given him a standing ovation while he was speaking about Barack Obama's dishonesty. The story Gowdy told was about a police officer who had unintentionally shot a young girl. As the story goes, a team of police officers responded to a call about a fire that had broken out. When they got there, a man opened fire at them and they quickly fired back. However, they had not seen the little girl that stood behind the man that has now been shot. The officers quickly rushed to the scene and, fortunately, saw that the girl had been shot, but was alive. Nonetheless, this moving story just shows us once again what a brilliant man Gowdy is. I think what we like about it is not so much the speech itself, but the passion with which Gowdy told it. Check out the video below in which Gowdy tells the story. What do you think about this? Share this on Facebook and Twitter along with your comments. Record-breaking Trump just did something that no other president in history has done. It is now official. No president in U.S. history has cut the budget as much as Trump. When he took office on January 20, 2017, the U.S. federal debt that was owed externally and internally was around $19 trillion at $19947304555212, according to Jim Hoft at the Gateway Pundit. Now. Let's take a look at what it's at. The president has no decreased it to $100 billion to about $19,845,188,460. No president in history has done this in the amount of time that Trump has. No president has reduced the debt since 1997. That's sad. Some history people might say that Clinton did so when he signed a balanced budget, but it's funny. The amount of U.S. debt during that time period actually increased. You will not see this information shared by CNN, NIT or The Washington Post. They are too busy pushing for a race war. I mean look at the headlines that have been coming out of the media recently. We know for a fact that Eisenhower was the last president to cut the debt by $2 billion each year, but no president has ever cut the debt by $100 billion. Help get this information out there. The media has been slandering our president. Share this if you still fight for Trump and want to make this country great again. Thanks for reading. Trump was right woman at free speech rally waves U.S. flag, then Antifa does something disgusting. Remember how President Trump got absolutely hammered by the media for saying that there were two violent sides to the conflict in Charlottesville a white nationalist side and an out left side? Watch video at the end. The media, Democrats, and even some Republicans piled on the president and accused him of defending white nationalism, despite explicitly condemning white supremacist groups and increasing reports of out left groups such as Antifa indeed being violent. Fast forward to the free speech rally in Boston on Saturday. This rally, whose organizers publicly distanced themselves from white nationalist movements, was shut down after over 30,000 counter-protesters showed up and made it impossible for the event to continue. Watch video at the end. To their credit, many of the counter-protesters were peaceful, however, there were also groups throwing urine and bottles at the police, and creating scuffles that resulted in 30 arrests. A particularly disturbing scene played out of a man ripping an American flag out of the hands of a woman and dragging her several feet. Watch it below, the woman appears visibly shaken after the encounter. It's a pretty sad day in America when you can't even hold an American flag at a protest without being assaulted. I wonder if that counter-protester realizes the counter-protest could only happen because of American values such as freedom of assembly and freedom of speech. Luckily things at Boston were far more subdued than those at Charlottesville, perhaps because the free speech group was so very small. But as this video proves, out-left groups such as Antifa do have violent elements. Share IT out so everyone sees. H slash T Fox News, ABC. Death nail Sheldon Adelson just destroyed McMaster with his final blow. National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster has been under heavy criticism recently, 
after he fired several National Security Council officials, signaling that he is a globalist who favors Obama holdovers. President Trump, however, had nice things to say about him recently, saying General McMaster and I are working very well together. Of course, he had nice things to say about Bannon too, right before he left. Now, however, the death knell might be sounding for McMaster. One of the most influential donors in the Republican Party, Sheldon Adelson, is reportedly quietly offering his support to get rid of McMaster. Quietly, meaning, reportedly, he doesn't want to be publicly associated with getting rid of McMaster. Adelson did support McMaster, as you can see, below, apparently, however, according to Briet Bart, Adelson recently learned that McMaster is anti-Israel, and that's not okay with him. Others at the White House, however, are saying that McMaster is remarkably pro-Israel. Of course, we must wonder, whose side are they really on? I must add, Bannon is no fan of McMaster, and Bannon is back at Briet Bart. You decide. Do you think McMaster needs to go? Speak your mind in the comments on FB, then share to gather everyone's point of view, so Trump knows what the American people want. What Newt Gingrich just said about McMaster has everyone shocked. While many of us think it's time for Trump to get rid of McMaster, Newt Gingrich has said this. He is the right person, in the right place, at the right time, Gingrich recently said. We are fortunate to have him serving the country. In fact, he titled his recent top ed for Fox News, We are fortunate to have H.R. McMaster as National Security Advisor. McMaster has recently ousted several Trump loyalists from the National Security Council, which has led many to be very concerned about where his loyalties really lie. Billionaire Republican donor Sheldon Adelson has reportedly removed his support of McMaster, having learned that he is anti-Israel. Is Trump about to fire another member of his administration? Would that be good? Or bad? Trump recently said General McMaster and I are working very well together. Which way should Trump go? McMaster strongly defended the president after he made his first comment about the violence in Charlottesville, VA, courtesy of ABC News via YouTube.com. He said the president was very clear and that he called on all Americans to take a firm stand against the bigotry and hatred. McMaster has become a very controversial figure. Do you think it's okay for him to stay? Comment yes or no and share to gather comments so Trump knows what the people want. H slash T Briet